Hello, my name is Tim Bruckner. I'm an Associate Professor of Public Health at University of California, Irvine. And this paper examines the relation between strong selection against frail gestations in utero and the likelihood of observing live-born male birth defects. My research focuses largely on exposures during pregnancy and how it affects the cohort health of survivors. And what I found in previous research is that the sex ratio, which is the number of live male to live female births, might sensitively gauge the extent of uh, male fetal loss, and especially uh, the frail male fetuses, which tend to be lost when the sex ratio declines dramatically. One of the most salient examples of my previous research on this looks at excess male fetal loss after September 11th. So on this foundation that uh, unusually low sex ratios, which might indicate strong selection against frail males, uh, could lead to strong selection bias in the observed prevalence of various outcomes, including uh, male live-born defects. We tested this hypothesis, and we used a variety of methods to examine the hypothesis, including time series and tr traditional logistic regression methods and uh, we examined the California Birth Defects Monitoring Program data, which has strong surveillance protocols for eight California counties over 19 years. What we found is that, consistent with the hypothesis, unusually low sex ratio months correspond with that conception cohort's reduced prevalence of live-born male birth defects. The magnitude of the results is around 25%, which corresponds, to give you a sense of um, the, the strength of the, of the result, to um, almost the equivalent strength of the folic acid supplementation uh, reduction on spina bifida. So relatively strong outliers in uh, the sex ratio in the negative direction are about the same magnitude of um, this, uh, um, this uh, public health program. There are several limitations of the paper. First, uh, we focus only on males, and we have lack of statistical power to examine specific defects, so we grouped six selected defects together. Uh, we also don't really have an ideal measure of the strength of selection in utero, so we resorted to the sex ratio, which is imperfect. Uh, that said, uh, if the results uh, hold up to replication in other places and times, there are two key implications. One is that epidemiologists would do well to control for this extreme form of selection bias in utero when they're examining the relationship between exposures in utero and adverse birth outcomes, such as birth defects. The second is, on a more basic science level, we hope that this work stimulates interest on examining temporal variation in cohort health and how temporal variation in selection in utero could shape cohort health of infants once born. Thank you for your interest.